Let's bring in our man from CNBC, the sports business reporter, award-winning Darren Ravel, who's pushing 125 in Twitter followers. Did you stay up and watch it, Darren? I did, uh, by luck. Uh, the wife watching uh, House Hunters, oh. one of my uh, my guests at around 10.45, uh, went downstairs to plug in the good old BlackBerry and uh, checked Twitter one last time and saw enough oh my gods that I uh, redirected the channel for the rest of the night. Yeah, trying to extricate yourself from the, the wife watching the program and then down yeah. to the basement, that's, that's a very... Uh, a, you need a lot of experience in that move. Yeah, it's so almost like a stop is, I, you know, just, first. just because you have plenty of TVs these days, or the average person does. I mean, I, I have a, a top hundred man cave in the country. <laughs> Not mean you can get away. Right. Uh, they're, yeah. they're two totally different things. Uh, actually, having a TV and physically being able to watch to um, you know getting away from your wife's wrath. Well, let me give you a little advice. What you do is you do kind of a, a down and then hump fake. You go kitchen, <laughs> then bathroom, then somehow. Oh, I could physically get away from her. That's that's good, but uh, uh, you know it's uh, it's it's difficult. I I do all these the fake brownie points and and tricks and you know there's if there's a game that I don't want to watch at all, I'll say I want to watch it so I can get a plus. <laughs> oh, away. nice. All right, Darren, I got a question for you. you. I know you're not an expert on the uh, sports, but you're you're an expert on the sports biz aspect of it. And did you witness the Jose Reyes thing last night? Yes. Okay. Now, as a business person and in the sports business, you know, it, it's he won. Yes, he won the title. He won the title. But free agency, doing somebody picking team as a business person in sports, how do you look at that, that the fact that he could go and I'm done, I'm quitting on my team, and the manager actually allows that? When you look at that player as a sports person, business person, what is the, what's the thoughts it that go through your head? It doesn't look as smart from a business standpoint as you might think it would be. Uh, one, you're not allowed to get any sort of bonus from uh, you know, winning something like a batting title, so he doesn't get that. Yes, he becomes the first Met to win a, a batting title, but – then there's the intangible of how selfish of a guy is this. Now, people have done it before. I think Wade Boggs did it. Um, but, uh, you know, I think there's some sort of intangible where potentially, and I don't know if you buy this or not, there's maybe an owner who says, what does that say about him? Now, a lot of owners say, I don't care he won the batting title. He's a great player. If the Mets want to get rid of him, I'll, you know, and, 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 and he's gonna, he'll go to any of the Mets, he's going to go. But I think there's something to be said for how selfish of a guy is this. And so I don't know if it was necessarily the smartest thing, especially when you looked at uh, Ryan Braun not getting it done either. Right. All right, so now talking about the business aspect for the World Series versus, like, football, the Super Bowl, and, and, and basketball championship in the NBA, how, how comparable are these prices? Is it still one of the highest out there? Or what, what's going on with baseball these days and, and ticket prices? It totally depends on, you know, playing, how big the stadium is. I mean, when you have a situation where the Giants are in the World Series, obviously that's a, a different story when, when their stadium only has 44,000. I think baseball, it's, it's, it's like anything. It's a demand. I mean, the, for the most part, your Super Bowl ticket, no matter what's going to go 1,300 and above. Um, but, but then it just depends on other sports, on how big the teams are. You know, in the NBA, obviously, if if it's the Lakers, you know, that's going to be a, if it's in a big market, that'll be a, uh, you know, highly coveted ticket. But it's pretty much just supply and demand. But I would say that with more and more baseball stadiums, new ones going to smaller venues, uh, that the World Series ticket is probably going to, by a factor of that, go up in general. Talking to Darren Ravel, Emmy Award-winning sports business reporter, CNBC, uh, also the host of Sports Biz Game On on Versus every Friday night at seven o'clock Eastern. Do you are you been following this uh, supposed secret meeting of NBA and the stars this yeah. weekend? How much are you buy uh, intensity zero? zero. <laughs> no season. I mean, I mean the, the idea. The idea that. Um, you know, there. What, what what I learned, and I've covered every single labor negotiation since 2000, uh, learned is that you can never force uh, uh, the pressure that goes on with labor negotiations. That is needed. You know, the the NF players and the owners got together because you know they knew that they were starting to miss preseason games, and preseason games were important to the owners. They were making 200 million dollars a week. Um, they, we are not at the point where 
either uh, party wants to do a deal right now. If Billy Hunter gives in right now for the union, he can't explain to his players why he gave in so early when they didn't miss any games. So the idea that, you know, if you don't get it, David Stern's idea that if you don't get it done this weekend, uh, you know, you won't, you might not have a regular season. I mean, that's bunk. I mean, I, I, I think the real deadline is December 15th, because if they don't get done by December 15th, the season's over. They can save it just like they did or, you know, have that 50-game schedule, you know, like they did a decade ago. Um, but uh, it, this is not this is not crunch time. And And whatever they say, I mean, they're just faking it. What's the impact of these guys going overseas? I mean, a lot of these guys could make some serious money, and then some of them they can't, they couldn't come back. They'd have to fulfill contracts. You've yeah, been watching some guys. Listen, until Kobe goes, until LeBron goes, until Dwight Howard goes, until Kevin Durant goes, don't talk to me about Darren Williams. I mean, he's he's up there, but he he's not a woe. Once a woe star goes, then you're you know. In the spirit of Joey Lawrence, whoa! Uh, then uh, you know, then 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 that's really leverage. Until that, there's no leverage. The players don't have any leverage here. I mean, the only leverage they might have is just lucking out if there's owner infighting between the haves and the have-nots. The haves, Jerry Buss in L.A., uh, Jerry Reinsdorf in Chicago, James Dolan in New York, Mark Cuban in Dallas, fighting with the Clay Bennett's of Oklahoma City and the Michael Heisleys of Memphis, basically saying we can't lose the moment. Momentum, but unfortunately, there's a lot of have-nots that uh, will do better off if they don't have a season financially, which is obviously the ultimate leverage play. Talking to Darren Ravel, CNBC Sports Business reporter. When you you've got 124,000 growing in Twitter, your the tidbits you throw out obviously are fantastic. Everyone loves them. Very interesting. The anecdotes and things like where do you when you come into work in the morning? Are you you go there? What is your goal? What's a typical day for you? My, well, usually I before I leave, I set up four or five tweets that I've kind of collected to go out at the right times. So I, I actually plan when they go out. Um, so so that that's number one. And then my goal is really to cover the business of sports, not only what I should be covering, but what people want. And, um, you know, the, the, the thing that I, I, I'd like to think I've be, been successful at is kind of serving as a companion while you're watching a game, spitting out a fact as soon as possible that no one else on all of Twitter has. So, um, you know, I, 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 before a game, I'm setting up with, like, I have contracts at my disposal and numbers I think I'm going to need so that I can, because sometimes the faster you turn some of that around, the better. When is it possible for someone as popular as you are on Twitter to actually financially reap a lot of benefit from that as far as, I mean, your popularity grows, and I know that, and CNBC, and they obviously have to be thrilled with it. But from a personal standpoint, can people, individuals, start, when will that happen? you think they'll be selling ads like people that have? No, it it happens already. I'm a, uh, uh, yesterday, you know, on on my show this week, uh, I have Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade follows me on Twitter. He follows like 200 people. He follows me on Twitter makes me nervous every time I bash the hell out of the heat, but, uh, which, I, which doesn't stop me. But Dwayne Wade and LeBron James follow me on Twitter. I direct message Dwayne Wade. You're coming to New York. I know you have a product. You know, is it okay for – I'd love to sit down with you for 10 minutes. I, also, I'd like to play you one-on-one for five minutes. And he d- direct messages me back. Uh, let's do it. And then we did it yesterday. So, you know, I'm, that's making me a better reporter. That's making me look good. That's making me, you know, I think a bigger brand. So it, it, does it pay off? I mean, everyone's – my, one of my favorite guys, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's kind of like a social media guy, said, uh, you know, what's the ROI of Twitter? What's the return on investment? I don't know. What's the return on investment on my mom? <laughs> and does my mom help me make money? I mean, is my mom – so so for me – and then I also say that in the journalism world, um, you know, the clout score, I don't know if you know this, K-L-O-U-T, where it basically comes up with an algorithm of how popular you are and how much your tweets resonate and, and what you do on Facebook – you know, it allows me to be a, it's like the equalizer for me. So I could have fewer followers than Bill Simmons, but I could be termed as relevant as him. And uh, I know the, the general manager of ESPN.com told me that now when they're evaluating journalist contracts, they look at their clout score. So it does mean money in the end. How'd you do in the one-on-one game with Wade? <sighs> mm. um, that good. I, I, uh, I wanted him to play me as tough as possible. I played Kobe to 15 
uh, for my 30th birthday and lost 15 nothing. But I really didn't have a single highlight. I, I stripped Dwayne Wade. Did you really? Did you score? Yeah, I saw his eye. I, I had the, kind of like my legs open, and I saw his eye kind of look there. And so I, I thought he was going to go between my legs, and he did, and I guessed, and I put my hand out and stole the ball. Good job. But he, but 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 I'll tell you. I mean, the most amazing thing, and we're all journalists, and we've watched this. The most amazing thing is that basically every play in the NBA in a rec league is a foul. You know, like he he's he's backing in against me, and like I, that's a foul in a in a league that I play in. But in the NBA, it's not even close. His shoulder is just like a. I mean, it's like a. Uh, it, it, he just, just so these guys are big. It's it's impossible. My 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 real highlight was uh, I returned to serve against Andy Roddick. I got it back in the court. <laughs> That's cool. You I, you, did you re- no? Come on, really? Yeah. And and it was and it landed. Yeah, I can play tennis. That's my sport. I can't play basketball. You knew where and, the serve. You knew where the serve was coming, though, or no? No. Was it a? Was it a? 130, was one, it, I have it on video, was 125, it, 130, yeah, I got was it back. It, was it flat or a big kicker out to the backhand? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a flat serve. The kickers, the, uh, let me just tell you, the kickers, he, he can get it to, to, spin, uh, to, to hit the corner of the, the, the outward box and it could spin so much you actually can't even come close to hitting it. That's what I'm saying. If he throws a kicker, a little top spin serve, forget it. You'd be in the stands trying to no, return. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, I've done a lot of these things. It's kind of doing this stuff. I've been in a, I've been in a NASCAR when it crashed into the wall. That was crazy. Oh, all right. Um, well, it wasn't, on, pur- wasn't on purpose. Um, but uh, I got a point in the hurry. Um, yeah, and the Roddick thing was was great, you know. Well, so. you know, I tell you what, we follow you on Twitter. We appreciate you. Keep it up, and we hope to catch up with you real soon. And Thanks, I hope boy. I hope your listeners enjoy my show. It's kind of like Twitter. On, you know, it's what I do on Twitter on TV, and we got a crazy lineup this week. We got uh, the CEO of the Bills, the Chief Operating Officer of uh, the Milwaukee Brewers. We got Dwayne Wade, and uh, we got the C- the CEO of UGG. To t- why Brady is is the perfect uh, endorser for their boots. Oh, uh, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. So, so versus <laughs> versus tomorrow night at seven. That's it. Okay, thanks, buddy. Appreciate thanks, it. Guys.